This episode is brought to you by the Let's Code Physics Patreon supporters. So we had an earlier episode about how you can access uh, two-dimensional shapes in vPython and then extrude them along a path to create really any shape that you want. There's a lot more options than we looked at in that original episode, so I wanted to follow up and take a look at some of the other shapes that you have access to. First one we'll take a look at is the rectangle. For a rectangle, you specify the width and the height. Here we've got a rectangle with identical width and identical height that will give us a square. Um, so we're going to set up a path here with five points. Uh, we're gonna go around in a square, basically. So we're taking a square and extruding it along a square. Uh, you notice there's a fifth point here that repeats the first point. That way we loop back around to where we started. Uh, when we press Control 2 to run this, we get this cool little frame shape uh, that's got a square kind of cross section along the beam. So you th when you think about this thing, you're thinking about a square cross section going along here, uh, perpendicular to, to the direction that's being extruded. So I've got a square extruding this way, this way, this way, this way. And uh, so I've got points one, two, three, four, and five coming back to the original. And it's a cool way to get a little frame pattern there. Um, I could, of course, make that path anything I wanted, wanted it to be. I could make it a hexagonal frame, an octagonal frame, but it's always going to have a uh, square cross section. Um, let's try a different one. Let's try getting an ellipse. So an ellipse is a squished circle here, specifying the width and the height or the major axis and the minor axis. Press control two. And so here you can now start to tell the difference between the path and the shape because the path is the same, right? It's still giving you a square frame, but the cross section is different now. The cross section is rounded now, giving you that uh, cool looking ellipse uh, cross section there. Uh, let's try out an arc. So an arc is a piece of a circle. You specify the radius of the circle that it's a piece of and you specify what angle it goes between. So we're gonna go from negative pi over two to pi over two. So from pointing downward to pointing upwards. So let's change my shape to an arc now. And so here's what we get. We get this cool little, uh, looks like the end of a wind tunnel kind of thing. So the arc you can see is contained within the cross section here and then it's being extruded along each side. It's giving you this neat little effect here at the corners uh, where those arced edges are meeting. And you can see you get the other end of that on this side back here. Let's try out a triangle next. For a triangle, you give it a length and a, uh, and a thickness. Um, let's try out just one arm of the frame for right now. I just want you to show you what this is going to look like. Oops, not like that. Let's do just the hash mark, there we go. And so you end up with uh, with this shape here. You notice it creates this little hole inside here because what we're doing is uh, is taking the triangle, we're extruding it along this direction. And so that thickness argument, that's what's specifying this hole on the inside, which is pretty cool. Um, I could also change, I believe if I change that thickness to a positive, I think that triangle flips upside down. Yeah, the triangle flips upside down. You get this cool little uh, Triforce design, pretty neat. Um, let's try out a pentagon next. So we'll go with pent on this, one, excuse me, P-N-T. I tried to make them all uh, three letters long except the arc because arc was already taken there. Um, I guess I could make it A-R-K for arc and <laughs> just misspell arc there. All right, let's press control two. Here you get a pentagon. Again, it's doing the same thing that the uh, triangle did where I'm getting this hole on the inside. There's other ways to get a hole inside of the extrusion. Um, I'll show you how to do that in a future episode about making uh, holes in your extrusion anywhere you want in any shape that you want. Of course, I could also turn this into the frame. We're not going to notice the hole with the frame here, but you do get these pentagonal sides. One, two, three, four, five. I suppose if we made this semi-transparent. I wonder if we could see the hole on the inside there. I haven't tried this before. Let's try opacity of one half. So opacity is the opposite of transparency. Um, I, I'm i having a hard time seeing that. I mean, it's a really cool look, but I'm having a hard time seeing if there is a hole on the inside of the arms there. So we'll just leave the opacity uh, at one here for now. 
I guess we can look at the triangle on the entire frame. Um, you can probably imagine what that's going to look like. You've got this uh, triangular shape here, one, two, three sides getting extruded along the edges there. Now, of course, I don't have to stick with a triangular pentagon. I can have as many sides as I want. Let's suppose I wanted to make a seven sided, what is that, a heptagon. Um, you can just specify ingon here and then tell it the number of sides that you want or the number of vertices there. And here I get my heptagon along the edge. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides there. Pretty cool. And of course, the more sides you give it, the more like a cylinder it will be. Um, let's try out maybe 15 sides. I think it's going to get too big. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's starting to, to crowd out the, the, the center region there. But you can see it's getting more rounded the more sides you add. Let's try out a star. So here I specified the number of points, the interior radius and the exterior radius. Let me show you what this looks like just along one arm of the frame here. So we'll just go along two points here. So you see I get this star shape and it's got a it's got an exterior radius going from the center to the outer points and an interior radius going from the center to the inner vertexes here. Um, you can see that exaggerated if we change this, say, to a 0.25, we'll make those arms of the star go in farther. So here we get a little bit more of a, of a pointy star, so that's your ability to move these uh, inner vertices in and out. Um, a couple more, let's take a look at a trapezoid. I can specify the width, the height, and then the width of the top one. So this is the wider side, this is the narrower side. Uh, oops, I forgot to change my name down here. TRP for trapezoid. It's getting neat trapezoid here. There's your uh, gold press latinum bar right there. Let's use that for the entire frame now. We'll get a neat little beveled frame looking thing. That's pretty cool looking. I suppose you could put a, 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 a small square on the inside here, give it a texture with a picture. You could have a nice framed picture in your vPython world. Finally, let's take a look at points. So this is where I can specify any uh, arrangement of points I want, right? So I don't have to have a regular polygon. I can just specify points to draw my own shape. Uh, let's also change the name of the thing. Uh, so here's the shape that I created. It's this weird little uh, ramp wedge looking thing. Um, but yeah, so basically you specify where each of these points is and then you extrude that shape along here. Just for completeness, let's take a look at how that looks along the frame. Yeah, so pretty cool. I've got like a beveled uh, in and out frame there. So yeah, so you can create any two dimensional shape you want, extrude it along any direction you want and really create any 3D shape that you want just with these 2D shapes and the extrusion function.